Hi and welcome. My name is Rafael Taubinger and I'm going to show you how to get started with the IMX Nano Evaluation Kit and the IR Embedded Workbench for ARM. I have here in my hands the IMX Nano Evaluation Kit that provides a platform for comprehensive evaluation of the IMX Nano application processors. It delivers high performance and power efficiency with multimedia interfaces. Uh, and also has the NXP PMC and uh, the NXP Wi-Fi solution for connectivity out of the box. Uh, the two board uh, solution uh, consists of a compact uh, module and a larger base that brings out of the board connectivity that is needed for the product evaluation. Uh, the compute module is proven, compact and a reference to accelerate uh, your uh, design. So uh, in this short video you will get the chance uh, to learn how to set up and configure the IR Embedded work Workbench for ARM and uh, make it work with, of course, IMX 8M uh, Nano uh, based applications. So we'll go over the startup, memory mapping, enabling cache, and finally do some tuning on speed optimizations for your bare metal application. Uh, I will also demonstrate the extensive uh, debugging capabilities that are made possible with the iJet debug probe that also supports 64-bit. Uh, so uh, let's move to the demo here and I'm going to show you the embedded workbench in action. Now I have the IR embedded workbench ID open here and the best way to get started uh, with the IMX 8 Nano is by creating a new project from scratch and here you can create a C uh, or C++ uh, project there is some template uh, with a main file uh, to make it a bit straightforward I already created a project here and before of going to the details of uh, the source code the first step that you need to do uh, when uh, working with IR Embedded Workbench and the IMX8 uh, Nano board is to select the right device. So I have it already uh, selected here. So it's exactly the device that it's populated on my uh, Nano uh, board. Of course, if you have some other variations or your own board, you can always uh, adjust it. All the devices are uh, uh, available here on the IR Embedded Workbench. Uh, next step is um, also make uh, the configuration on the data model you are using. Uh, are you running the code here in 32 or 64 bit mode and the data model uh, regarding uh, pointers and so on. So we have the ILP32 uh, and the LP64 mode uh, available here. So it's just uh, selectable here and the option you can do. Uh, later, if you want to improve code quality, there is static analysis uh, available with Misra 30C and even some standard and security checks you can just um, verify your code or even make sure that it's compliant with uh, the standards uh, you can also do some testing with a runtime checking some overflows division by zero maybe some unhandled switch cases or bound checking that are necessary on the compiler side if you want to get the best out of your application when it comes to performance or even size uh, you can, uh, of course, increase here uh, the optimization to size or speed. Um, that's uh, all configurable and easy to use. And finally, when you select a device, uh, the ID will already suggest a linker file. Uh, but in this case, I'm running uh, my application on this nano board on the OC RAM. So I will just go into the details here uh, in a while. Uh, but also very important, you need to define the entry point and that's connected also to the startup and how you uh, enter uh, into execution here on your application. Final step is um, to select the driver you want to do here, um, or let's say uh, the driver you want to use for debugging. And you could use the simulator, but since the iChat supports 64-bit and even in uh, multi-core uh, combinations, we select iChat here. And um, finally, uh, if you have multi-core, of course, you can do all the different configurations here. Um, if you have a M4, M7, and all the different uh, combinations here available. So very straightforward. The interface is already selected here as a JTAG. And from here, we can mainly go to our source code. Uh, we have a main application here. 
and um, we also have some um, additional uh, code that can be run from different uh, cores here it's up to you how to configure that and load uh, the balance but the uh, first step is to define the entry point and that's IR program start you can of course rename it and then you rename it on the settings uh, where we do some initial um, let's say disable MMU set it up later uh, cache and so on that uh, gets set up uh, before you come to main and in between also some data initialization done by uh, the startup routines in built in IR and Babbit workbench I mean like initializing variables with values with zero and so on so that's one step when it comes to exceptions you of course want to be able to handle them in a good way and uh, here uh, you can see an example how that it's uh, done with uh, the different uh, handlers uh, very easy and straightforward to work with and finally I have my application here uh, under main that I will uh, run I have cache enabled here and that's mainly where we um, have some additional registers and where we do uh, the manipulation here and we can even do some performance monitor uh, checking here if your device has that most of them having it good from here I can build my application and uh, as you see no errors um, if you look here on the output we even get a map file and how uh, the application has been placed in memory uh, of course uh, that reflects poorly what you have on your linker file uh, where you define the different regions you have if you are using a DDR or uh, the OC RAM like I'm doing here now uh, you can define specific stack uh, sizes for different for the different cores um, and then uh, also uh, the entry point how you want to have this application uh, behaving yeah? good uh, from here the build was successful we have everything in place so I will connect uh, to the target I'm starting uh, a download session here and once we have everything synchronized we will land at main uh, from the main point here we can mainly do the step by step here either in the disassembly mode where you can see the 64 bit instructions i can go step by step here uh, but i can of course move here to uh, the c level and then um, as you can see it's enabling cache and doing some initialization here uh, everything that is available during the debug session it's under the view menu i mean from registers memory stack information and so on so if you look here, for example, on memory, you will be able to look inside the device, uh, go to any symbol uh, that it's available here in the application or known. Uh, if you want to see uh, the registers, that's also straightforward. You open the register window and you can see also the different groups. All the registers are available, everything that is available on the device. It's um, displayed here for your convenience. You also have a watch window so if the application is running you can see uh, the value for example in this case here it's printing some hello world information with uh, the cache enabled here to speed up uh, the performance and every time i end up here in this loop it's printing uh, the information so as you can see it's a loop here and we have a counter uh, and you can definitely see uh, the information that uh, the values that it has so very easy convenient by selecting a device making sure that uh, the memory mapping of the linker configuration file is fine if you want to enable cache or do the configuration and the mmu uh, there are some routines that you can use as reference we can provide these examples uh, the startup handling exceptions all there and from there you just connect uh, to uh, the target uh, via iJet very straight uh, forward and easy uh, to use okay um, as you can see it is straightforward to work uh, on an IMX 8M Nano application with the IR Embedded Workbench for ARM. Uh, you can guarantee code quality, have full control of your application, and of course take advantage of the advanced debug capabilities. With IR Embedded Workbench version 9.10, you can have access to the IMX 8M Nano and support it if you have uh, the right license. So please uh, talk to the salesperson or maybe the local FAE that you have a direct contact and they will give you all the information about it. And finally, please uh, subscribe uh, to our channel so you'll make sure to uh, follow all our nice techie videos that we are releasing.
Thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed this video.